Good evening and welcome to the 42 Wonders of Our Night Sky, a brand new astronomy show in which we're going to be exploring some of the best deep sky objects in our visible universe. Throughout this series I'm going to be showing you how to find each of these wonders from the comfort of your own light polluted garden and how they look viewed through three very different telescope setups. We're also going to be rating each and every single one of them based on three very important criteria, their mystery, their power and their beauty. The average of these three values will determine their wonder rating and ultimately their position on our wonder wall. What deep sky object will be crowned the ultimate wonder of our night sky? Let's find out. I'm David Scotting and this is Astronomical. Coming up on tonight's episode, we'll be taking a look at billions of suns circling a monstrous black hole, one of the largest star clusters in our entire galaxy, and the mystery that lies below the belt of Orion. So to kick things off this series, we're going to take a look at Messier Object 104. Hats off to the astronomer who named this deep sky object, here is the Sombrero Galaxy. Located more than 31 million light years away, this colossal galaxy is estimated to have a mass 800 billion times that of our own sun. It is absolutely massive and it's not a surprise that even with the help of a small scope, amateur astronomers can spot the galaxy during the spring months alongside the constellation of Virgo. It doesn't get too high above the horizon here in the UK so the next question is, how does it look when viewed for a $500 telescope? The Seastar S50 does a spectacular job at demonstrating precisely why we will find the hobby of astrophotography so captivating. Even with this little telescope, we can see the distinct glowing central bulge of the galaxy. But thanks to the help of our remote observatory platform, Telescope Live, we can make out the galaxy's dusty detailed structure from the surface of our planet. This image was captured by their telescope located in Chile. And our views only get 10 times better once you start pointing a telescope located in outer space towards the galaxy. This image of the Sabrero galaxy is one of the most iconic shots in our human history. It really is mind-blowingly good. Now, as for the ratings of the Sombrero Galaxy, I think we can all agree that its beauty is top draw. Its power is undeniable, and its mystery is as secretive as the bright dense core at the center of the galaxy. Which is why I'm giving the Sombrero Galaxy a wonder rating of... 79. But what does its wonder rating mean? During the course of this series, we will be ranking each of the 42 wonders based on the averages of their beauty, power, and mystery, in order to determine the ultimate wonder of our night sky. To catalogue this, I have created the Wonder Wall. My girlfriend asked me if I was going to sing the song every single time that I revealed the Wonder Wall, so I said maybe. And that's the best joke you're going to get all series. So here it is. This right here is our Wonder Wall. On it are all 42 of the wonders in their predetermined positions. All that remains now is to reveal them one by one. So to kick things off, let's see where the Sombrero Galaxy has ranked on our board. It has indeed just missed out on our top 10, finishing in the 11th spot. Do you think that's fair? Let me know in the comments down below. By leaving a comment down below with your personal ratings, you'll be in with a chance of winning your very own Seastar S50 Smart Telescope. Over the course of this series, you will have the opportunity to enter into this competition a maximum of 14 times. That's once per episode. There are three Seastar Smart Telescopes over grabs, as well as 10 personalized deep sky images, 25 one month memberships to the online remote observatory platform, Telescope Live, and a whopping 50 copies of the soon to be released official 42 Wonders of Our Night Sky book, which is jam-packed with stargazing content including every single one of the wonders from this series and 10 more mystery bonus wonders that just missed out on the cut. There's also a printed copy of the final Wonder Wall, which is a big part of the reason I won't be releasing this book until later in the series so that we can all avoid the spoilers. All you have to do to be in with a chance of winning one of these prizes is leave a comment down below stating what your ratings would be for each of the wonders featured in today's video. It's a maximum of one entry per video and the closing date for entries is the 31st of January 2026. Best of luck. All right, let's take a look at what's next. Our next wonder is a collection of several hundred thousand stars. This is Messier 13. Some of the stars at the center of this globular cluster are packed so tightly together that they often collide and produce new stars. Here is the great globular cluster in Hercules. 
Located 25,000 light years away, there are half a million stars crammed into an area just 145 light years wide. This immense star cluster is almost as old as the universe itself. You can find it very easily with even a pair of binoculars by looking towards the constellation of Hercules during the spring-summer period. Can you imagine what it would be like to live at the centre of this densely packed stellar neighbourhood? Our nights would be fully illuminated with starlight. The question is, how deep into this treasure trove of stars can we see? Let's find out. Well, even with the help of this $500 telescope, the mysterious glow of this stellar collection is obvious. Its shimmering golden appearance make it all the more inviting for exploration with our million dollar remote observatory. Its capabilities have enabled it to capture the stunning blue and red colours of the star cluster's youngest and oldest stars. Now look at this, you can't help but imagine that living in a stellar neighbourhood as dense as this would undoubtedly increase your chances of discovering alien life forms nearby. And yet, the disturbing truth is, with these stars at the centre being packed so tightly to one another, it's actually one of the most chaotic places in the universe. Our nearest star after the sun is four and a quarter light years away. The stars at the centre of this cluster are roughly 0.05 light years apart from one another. I said to you at the beginning that this star cluster was almost as old as the universe itself. Well, those stars that have been around for the longest are the red ones you see scattered throughout. But those blue stragglers are stars that have collided with others and reignited, appearing younger and bluer than they otherwise should. The core of Messier Object 13 is a cosmic mosh pit, filled with some of the most ancient suns our universe will ever know. Overall, I think its beauty speaks for itself, its power is fascinating, and its bright appearance makes it an easy target to find in our night sky. And that's why Messier Object 13 earns a wonder rating of... 70. But where does that leave it on our wonder wall? The Great Globular Cluster in Hercules was one of the first deep sky objects I looked at for a telescope. It makes for a very wonderful sight, and that's why it ranks 29th on our wonder wall. And for our final wonder of the night, we're going to take a look at one of the most iconic sites in astronomy. This is a stellar nursery, a region within which new stars are being born as we speak. Here is the Orion Nebula. The Orion Nebula means a lot of different things to different people but to me, it is quite literally the heart of our night sky. It is almost a rite of passage, if you will, for amateur astronomers to experience this core stargazing moment as they look through their telescopes at this stunning stellar nursery. I remember being 16 years old, stood outside in my dark, damp garden, pointing my telescope around aimlessly at stars on a partly cloudy night before coming across a very distinct dark cloud. To be completely honest, it scared me a little. It seemed like something I wasn't supposed to see, an ancient and forgotten sight. You immediately feel this weight of significance as you stare at this stellar nursery, and something just doesn't feel right. How can you be looking at something so pure and fundamental to all of our existences and it not be a bigger deal? You are quite literally looking at the birthplace of new stars, stars very much like our own, and you are seeing them for free. This nebula can be seen from anywhere on the planet regardless of light pollution. So why on earth isn't every single human being talking about it? How can it be that this really exists, is so accessible, and yet it feels like I'm the first person to ever discover it?
It was just such a weird experience. It kept moving out of my line of sight and it felt like I was chasing this rare view and I had to follow it or it would disappear forever. So I just stayed there completely transfixed until the clouds robbed me of my view. The Orion Nebula is a very special sight, not just to me, but to astronomers across the world. It doesn't matter if you're stargazing from central London or the coast of Rio, you can always make out this nebula with the help of a pair of binoculars or a small telescope. All you have to do is look below the belt of Orion and find this blurry patch of light in its sword. To our naked eye, the Orion Nebula actually appears pretty grey. But even with a cheap camera and a relatively short exposure, you can bring out its vibrant colours. The $500 telescope creates a masterpiece. Seriously, imagine telling your mates you took a picture of the night sky from your own garden and then showing them this. I've genuinely had family ask me for this as a printed image. It's a testament to how perfect of a beginner target the Orion Nebula is for newbie astrophotographers. Meanwhile, the $1 million remote observatory images allow us to peer deeper into the core of the Orion Nebula and take a sneak peek of the explosive stellar bursts that are currently taking place. But none of them can outdo the Hubble Space Telescope when it comes to capturing the interest details of this incredible nebula. It's by seeing real images like this captured of our cosmos that I don't understand how everyone cannot be completely obsessed with space. It really does feel like a fever dream but this is really out there and you can go see it for yourself and it will cost you absolutely nothing to do so. When it comes to the ratings, I do hope you don't consider me too biased, but I've scored the Orion Nebula 95 in terms of beauty, 72 in terms of power, and 89 for mystery, which in total gives us our highest wonder rating of the series so far at 85. Now, if you'd taken a poll of amateur astronomers and asked them to list their top 42 wonders of the night sky, then I guarantee a very large portion of them would have the Orion Nebula ranked in a number one spot. And yet, here on our wonder wall, the Orion Nebula ranks in the third spot which means there are still two wonders that are better than it in terms of our rankings. What could they possibly be? Let me know your predictions in the comments down below. And I'm afraid that's all we have time for this week. If you feel like this episode has flown by, then that's probably largely in part due to the fact that I've ensured there are no ad interruptions throughout the course of any of these episodes. This is to make sure that these series are as fun, immersive and educational as possible. It does, however, mean that I lose a large chunk of the YouTube ad revenue. So if you want to continue to support and fund future series like these, then here are four cool ways in which you can do so. Number one is to like, comment, subscribe and share. If you know any friends or family, maybe even your nan or your granddad, who you think might like this kind of stuff, let them know about it, especially since it is free to do so. Number two is to join my Patreon and donate as little as £1 a month to help support the channel and as a bonus receive behind the scene updates as to how I'm getting on with doing whatever it is that I'm currently doing. Number three is to buy the book, but that won't be hitting the shelves for at least another month now, so to be continued. And number four is to try out Telescope Live's remote observatory services. Thank you very much for joining me. This is the beginning of a very beautiful journey and I hope to see you again next week for the next part of it. I'm Damon Scotting and this was Astronomical. Next week we'll be taking a look at the gem of our solar system in more detail, as well as learning how to spot the Heart Nebula and one of the largest black holes known to man. So make sure you're subscribed and keeping an eye out for weekly new episodes. Thank you for watching and clear skies.